In reverence to the Word of God, we're going to read in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 13. Luke 24, verse 13. Luke 24, 13. Behold, at the same day, we're traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all things, all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that same Jesus himself drew near and went with him. But their eyes were strained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Amen? The church may be seated. Behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emos, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. What day was that? Who can tell me? Same day. The resurrection. The death happened. Before that, uh, the Friday, and that was um, Sunday for us in our calendar, the day that Jesus resurrected. And our message today, our subject for tonight, as always, is to talk about Jesus. We do not have any other message. We have no other subject but this. The faithful church lives for Jesus. The faithful church lives for Jesus. The Bible mentioned several situations, several, several events that happen about Jesus, with Jesus, but there's no other subject that moves our heart more than this, the resurrection of Jesus. As for through the resurrection of Jesus, that the church was established. Jesus died, yes, at the cross. It was prophes prophesied about that. But what many people forget is that even though this act was prophesied so many, there was a prophecy about the resurrection of him. And this resurrection, this moment, is one of the most precious moments for the Church of Jesus Christ. As for our faith, the 
the beginning of the church. It's based on that. Because through the resurrection of Jesus, that he demonstrated, showing to us that there is, yes, indeed, the victory upon the death. That there is an eternity in the presence of God that exists indeed a reason, a motive to be and to stay in the presence of the Lord. The mankind can only conquer death and everything else if he understand the resurrection of Jesus. If the humanity do not pay attention, if the church don't give value to this moment, to this act, to this event, remember what he told the Lazarus to the Lazarus sister, I am the resurrection and the life. Martha, do not be worried. Because the resurrection is everything for us. Through the resurrection of God is where we can see the strengthening of the church. Many stayed or went to the death of Jesus only. When you start reading the chapter 24, you're going to see that the sisters, the ladies, they went to the, the grave. They went after the body of Jesus. So, prophetically, they went to the, the history only. The, all the prophets have mentioned to them sometime before about his death, but also about his resurrection. But the thing is that they so in, involved emotionally about what Jesus left, how friendly he was, his messages, all the miracles. So many that was fed and healed. Bible left some events, some historical moments, and imagine the ones that would not testified to the apostles or to the disciples and it was not written and they they stayed only in that part the part of the death and as a, it was a costume they went to the the graveyard taking flowers taking perfumes oils so Jesus died they forgot about the prophetic as these two men mentioned in the text and the same day that Jesus rose again the same day that the ladies went to the the tomb and it was empty they, they had a moment they had an opportunity to speak with him and Jesus said to them go after the others and tell them that the promise have fulfilled do not forget about Peter tell Peter And at the same day, two of the disciples, even though listen to the testimony of the ladies, even though they decide to go away, because they were sad, frustrated, very sad, very upset with everything that happened. They felt weak. And now, The word says that Jesus presented himself to them. They were like heading to the old life, to the old costumes, for the things that they know. Totally upset. They decide to go to a retreat place that they thought would be okay or good. They would trying to look for a comfort, something to approach to can, so they can cry. So like most of the people like to talk about the past and remembering things. 
So they went to Emmaus. So there they had a point of reference. How many people do that in our days? Many. In our days, people face the struggles and trials. They, l they have their losses. They make wrong choices. Forget what God has promised. People sometimes abandon the Word of God and all the advices from the Lord and they void all the operation of the Holy Spirit and they choose whatever is better for them. I think God told me not to do, but I think it's a moment to do. People choose sometimes. And many people, they know what people has promised to them. I think this is the right decision. And then the frustration comes. <laughs> so they, they, they chose wrong, go to the right, and you went to the left. It will be wrong, it will be bad. You're going to be leaving frustrated. Frustrated. See these two men? In the verse 21 says, But we're hoping that he was the one that was going to redeem Israel indeed. Besides all this today, is the third day since these things happened. Thank you. So when man choose not to listen to the voice of God, when the man cancel the voice of the Holy Spirit, he got blind. And spiritually you don't see, you lose the discernment. You lose the approach to God. All the intimacy he has with the Creator. The, you, you don't listen anymore. Your eyes cannot see. So you go through a disappointment. And all you want sometimes is to stay apart and let the time go by. Some say nothing better than the time, right? So this man, they chose not to listen to the prophecies, not to believe in the testimony of the ladies, and they had to emos. So people do that sometimes. They don't want to know about the Lord, the fellowship with the church. They don't want to pray, read the word. They don't want to seek the Lord. To seek for strengthening in the Lord. To, come, to, be, to seek for a reconciliation with the Lord. Sometimes it's more convenient to abandon and to be isolated. But brethren, the word shows us that the best choice for man is to have a deep experience with the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus always go to encounter the man. Until why the faithful church is here and why the Holy Spirit is upon the church, governing the church, directing the church, speaking with the church, you will have an opportunity. It will be an opportunity. And this opportunity is provided by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will reveal himself to the man. 
And like they said, what words are that? Jesus said to them, what are you talking about? What kind of conversation is this that you have and why you were sad? Now you're going to understand that the Lord Jesus starts to reveal himself to the man. This is the love of God. The man only feel whole and only perceive that his life is complete if he is in the presence of the Lord. Without the presence of the Lord, we are nobody. You can have your corner, whatever, your house on the beach, beach house, your, your hiding place. God is not in these places. God will not be close to you if you're not under his direction. And he's, he wanted to be always close to us. When the, when the mankind isolate himself and void the operation of the Holy Spirit, God is not in the business. The Bible says that the one that the apart, get apart, they isolate themselves. It's important for us. It's to value whatever is prophetic. Give worth to what God is doing in your life today. Open your heart, my sister, my brother. And then the blessing will come. The mankind will always make the wrong choice. Always going to fall for the sin. We will always be by ourselves. Fall for the sadness, for the frustration, delusion, and dismay. Yes, but when God reveals himself to us, when God comes in our encounter and he touches us, when we go, when we start listening to his voice, isolating, you're not going to listen to God's voice going to be worse and worse. As more isolated you be, more apart from the Lord, more you, you will be making the re reconciliation more difficult and taking longer. And maybe this is what the enemy of our souls is planning. When the man is not finding solution or exit, that's when the devil comes and starts to attack and say, relax, go to the comfort zone, and you lose everything. But the love of God is tremendous. The love of God, it, 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 there's no way to express, to explain. It needs to be lived. And tonight, God is giving us one more opportunity so we can live in His presence. Do not get apart from the Lord. Do not isolate yourself. And most important, do not cancel the Word of God. But the most important thing is what God is giving you as an instruction. If God is saying to you, do that, and if He's giving you the opportunity to live in His presence, in fellowship, in sanctification, seeking for His presence above everything. If He's giving you this opportunity, embrace it before it's too late. Because there will be a moment that the Holy Spirit will be withdrew, withdrawn. After Jesus speaking to them, revealing himself and showing all the word. Since Moses, Jesus explained since the beginning. 
No, you're wrong. The one that you thought they're going to come to to redeem Israel from the government of the Romans. That doesn't exist. Prophetically, no. This is something from the mankind, the nature of the man to want to desire a leader, someone to go in front of you and, and solve the terrestrial problems. But Jesus brought, came to bring peace. Jesus came to bring salvation. Jesus came to bring the resurrection of the mankind and, and the victory upon the biggest enemy of mankind. What you are going through now, the loss, the situation, the problem, the struggles, that is, is temporary. Because this has a solution. If you're feeling diluted, deluded, if you're frustrated, disappointed, you can go over and you can overcome. That will pass away. But one thing, there's no solution. The death. After that, there's nothing that you can do. But Jesus is insisting. The Holy Spirit is knocking at the door of your heart telling you to value the sacrifice of Jesus and the, his resurrection and to live what Jesus lived for us conquering our biggest enemy which is death something that never we never can do by ourselves nor through the technology medicine money nothing when the death comes doesn't matter if you're rich or poor the destiny is the same. Under the, the soil, you bear it. It's gone, done. Doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, fat, skinny, pretty, or ugly. The fate is the same. But when Jesus reveals himself to us, when Jesus comes, and when he shows us his project, the project of the Father, whatever is in the Bible, the beauty of God's word to save the mankind and to leave him to eternally be with him. Then our eyes got opened and the man will conquer the solitude, the sadness, we'll see that there is, yes, indeed, a destiny, and this destiny is with Jesus. The man that was walking with Jesus, they, at the end, said, when he was talking to us, did you feel your heart warm? And they said, Jesus, stay with us, because the, the soul of the man will be whole only if they are with Jesus. So, isolated. But when they encounter Jesus and they discover that there is life after death in the eternity with God, then the joy comes. This joy, this eternal happiness, we're going to live only in His presence. Because the Holy Spirit starts to touch and warm our hearts, and the, the way that the, our heart pulses is showing the desire. This is what the church desires, the second come of Jesus. And as more as we enjoy our fellowship in the presence of the Father, happier we will be. This happiness will last forever. Only in Jesus that can happen. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord can speak greatly to our hearts that the salvation only through Jesus joy only through Jesus. Let's sing a song.
Glória a Jesus. The Lord gave a revelation about a woman that is with us tonight. And so far she's been believing in the faith by coincidence. Tr uh, lucky charm. And she believes that the situation she's living on right now, it's by accident. You are wrong. There's no such a thing. God has the, the power upon everything. God is in control of everything. What about the free will? Yes. God offered the man the blessing and the curse. You choose. If you are using your free will and choosing God to govern your life, you will be under the blessing. But if you are using your free will and not letting God guide your life, You're going to have problems, struggles, losses. And then there will be no lucky. It's your choice. And the Lord tonight is giving you the understanding that He wants and He can change the fate of the destiny of your life from now on. You want to have victories? Do you want to have peace within the trials and struggles? In the midst of what's happening? Do you want to feel this safety, this assurance? Open your heart to Jesus and let the Holy Spirit govern your life. Do not ignore, do not void what God wants to do in your life. Exercise your free will. It was given from God to you. But choose Jesus. Choose to walk with Jesus. And you will see how God can provide you a chance, a new chance in life. Amen? Confess to Him that you need to live his salvation through Jesus Christ by faith waiting on him to conduct your life the Lord showed also another situation a family that is living difficult moments the, the gift talks about a storm talks about the very difficult moment in their family lives losses and mayhem and sometimes the members of the family within this situation is trying to get apart and isolate themselves do not do that do not look for this corner that you think that exists but look for the presence of the Lord seek for the house of the Father seek for the fellowship because here we have the bread in abundance not the man not the church But seek for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Try to sanctificate yourself. To isolate from the sin, from the world. And come to the presence of the Father. Amen? Sanctification is to put yourself aside apart from the sin. And we were called. We were called to live in the presence of the Lord in fellowship with him let's stand let's have a word of praise to the lord lord we bless your name as it's good to be in your presence in your in your house and to feel how your presence makes good for our lives truly We don't have words to express our gratitude and praises for everything that you have done for us. For your love, O oh Lord. We, we love you, O oh Lord. 
we love to serve you. We could serve you even better. And tonight we would like to render our gratitude and praises for everything that you have done for us. And we will never repay what we, you have done for us. Because the great price was paid giving your only begotten Son to die on the cross to give us the assurance of salvation. So glorious, so marvelous. God, preserve us in this way because our greatest joy is to be one day with you in heaven. Because this world, we don't feed here anymore. In your presence we have the security. You allow us to live in your presence a good life. And everything you, we need you have provided, O Lord. You always involve us in your love. When we are sad, you speak to us. It's good to listen to your voice. That's why, O oh God, we thank you for your great love, for your care. For everything that you have done for your people, for your church, as for no other place we can find such a blessing. It's good to be here listening to your sweet voice, O oh Lord. We render thank thankfulness for one more week of victory that you allow us to experience. And in you we are more than conquerors because we have chose to be with you. In the name of Jesus we praise you. Amen. Lord, receive our service in adoration to your name. Lord, hold us in your presence. Allow us to leave your house with our hearts full of your blessings that we can have in our lips a praise, a gratitude. That's our praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We are scheduling a baptism for March, the month of March. We have some names. We have places. We have time to work with whoever did not baptize themselves and desire to do it. So bring your name. Let us know. Manifest yourself. We're going to start the classes in the first week of March. We're going to talk about the doctrine. So if you have the desire to baptize yourself on the waters, to give this public testimony of faith, you can talk to us. And I ask the church to be praying for this event. Also in March, we're going to have the event of the children, intermediate and adolescents. It's an evangelistic moment. We're going to be inviting children, going to be able to, to invite friends, guests. It's very important for them, and consequently, it's important for, for us as a church. And also, pray for the, the seminar in Boston that will take place in April. If you like to register yourself, look for our brother David. He will be able to help you with the instructions for the registration. So let's pray for great blessings. Tomorrow at 10.30, our Sunday school teaching. And we dismiss you all with the peace of the Lord.